Hebrew Kingdom building. So y'all take a look at this, y'all. This was from September 18th. So September, uh, just to put things into perspective, um, oh, you turned it on? I told I was about for that. I almost forgot. Um, Yom Kippur was September 23rd, to put things into perspective. So this was the Shabbat, I believe, before Yom Kippur. I'm pretty sure of you. So she she was basically about to cry like that's me. 
Yah, Yahusha loves us on in a, on, in a way that we can't comprehend. The feeling that I felt, he showed me how he felt. It's, 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 it's beyond comprehension. He loves us in a way, that is our bridegroom. And he yearns that for intimacy with his bride. You can't be you can't be moving around too busy to get on your knee. You can't you can't you can't take it away from that. To, you got to prioritize time with Yahusha every day. In the dream, there were times I was expecting her. I was I was expecting her, and she wasn't there. I was, and the level of hurt and pain I can't even explain. Um. The appointed times, we have to get back to make sure that we are praying during the appointed times. We were doing this fast. We were supposed to be spending more time with you, with Yahusha, and he showed us that we're not doing that. I will stop Revelation there. chapter 2, real quick, y'all. Revelation chapter 2. He showed me this was us, y'all. This is us as an example. <coughs> y'all remember that? And what 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 was the solution to to to, to, uh, to what was what were we supposed to do? The prayer times. This was the Shabbat before um, Yom Kippur. This was the Shabbat before Yom Kippur, September eighteenth, when the Most High. Actually, most I revealed that to me earlier, but I wasn't allowed to say nothing until then. The Shabbat before Yom Kippur. All right, why am I bringing this up? Because there's more layers that he showed me to this. On the first day of 11 birth, we were down there. I wanted to talk to y'all about that on the Mishra Kabi, and I wasn't allowed to until today. So... It's crazy because it actually ties into what, um, it's amazing to me, to what uh, uh, Cody uh, Bedell was saying, actually. That's what's so crazy to me. Um, I wasn't going to bring this part out until the end of the lesson, but because of what she was saying, I want to bring this out right now and go into the other stuff afterwards uh, because it segues into what she was just saying. Does that make sense, y'all? Okay. Man. So Yahuwah told us, he, he showed me that the way to be intimate with him, at least for us as an assembly, is to go back to the prayer times. Is to really be serious about the prayer times. So, I don't know if y'all remember this, but I believe it was the, this past Shabbat before Pesach. We talked about, I think it was, or it was the one but Shabbat before that, I can't remember exactly, but it was very recently. We were talking about how the time for intimacy with Yahuwah, what a time, the womb is the Holy of Holies. The womb is the Holy of Holies. And the, there's only one time out of the year that the high priest, Yahusha, goes into the Holy of Holies, the womb. That is on Yom Kippur. The Most High revealed that to us and wanted me to bring that out to y'all right before Yom Kippur about the intimacy with him. So we talked about this a couple of Shabbats ago that hey, Yom Kippur is the time when the bridegroom goes into the bride. It's the time when the bridegroom goes into the womb. It's the time of conception. Do y'all remember that when we talked about that? Do y'all remember when we counted? We counted the 40 weeks and how it lined right up to the second Pesach. Because Pesach is about to birth. Let's do this. So, okay. This is the part I left out. That this is the layer who had showed me the first day of the 11 bread that blew me away. Hopefully it blew y'all away in the same level. But at least it blew it out. I was amazed. Forgot about the daily sacrifices. So Yom Kippur is the time of conception. But actually the intimacy with Yahuwah is a daily thing, not just once a year on Yom Kippur. How many times a year can a woman conceive? 
once a year. That's Yom Kippur, the time of conception. But the bridegroom, he wants intimacy with the bride every day. That's the daily sacrifices. Y'all get what I'm saying? That's an everyday thing. That ain't no once a year. That's when the seed is planted once a year. But the intimacy is a daily thing. So wives, all right, I won't say it. I won't go there. I won't go there. <laughs> so wives, don't think it's crazy when your east seems to be wanting the intimacy more than you feel like. That's Yahushua all the way. He is the bridegroom, and he wants intimacy with the bride every day. So much so, he established an order to where you are offering up sacrifices every day. And you know what? The Holy of Holies is the womb. So what do you think the holy place is? The entryway into the womb. You go in there every day. The Holy of Holies is, is, is once a year. The Holy of Holies is once a year. But you go into the holy place every day. Y'all follow me? The sons of Aaron. Nobody, can't anybody just go into the holy place. Can't anybody just go into the holy place. So that, that, was, the, that was the aspect that I was that I was wondering about because I'm like, well, yeah, who should the bridegroom though? Yeah, who should the bridegroom? So how does that work? How does that work? Let's take a look at Shemot chapter 29. Um, got it up. We got another mic that'll work. Those work. Oh, it's all uh, Verses 38 through 46. I put it up on the tank. Yeah, so Exodus 29, verse 38. Matter of fact, you know what? Let's start. First, let's start um, a little higher up just to get the, a little bit of the context down. So let's start with verse 1. Everybody there? No. <laughs> okay. Exodus 29. Are you doing the whole lesson right now? Nah, we're, we're going to break and get the chairs up here shortly. Uh oh. I, want, I wanted to bring this out right now, though, um, to segue from what Cody was talking about, because it was literally the lesson I put together. Uh, but why? Because we don't have no scriptures. Oh. So you like, are y'all there? We all like. Oh. Uh, <laughs> y'all don't have no way to get y'all scriptures? We, we were doing praise and worship. Can you put on the screen, so That's a good point. Sorry. Good point. Oh, yeah, this ain't you. I'm going to put it Yeah, that's not. Nah, nah, that's okay. We just going to read it. We just going to read it, y'all. Well, you know what? Let me just put it on the screen. I'll do it. I'll put it on the screen, y'all. Screen mirroring. I just don't. The iPhone's a little different. Yeah, I think you gotta have an internet connection or something. Yeah, so. Yeah. All right, yeah, we're gonna put it on the screen. We got it. We got it. All right, y'all see this? All right, let's start with verse one. Can y'all uh, try to look at that? Does that work a little bit? Oh, good, hallelujah. Shemot chapter 29, starting verse one. And this is what you shall do to them, to hallow them, for ministering to me as priests. Take one young bull and two rams without blemish, and unleavened bread, unleavened cakes mixed with oil, and unleavened wafers anointed with oil. You shall make them of wheat flour. You shall put them in one basket and bring them in the basket 
with the bull and the two rams. Now read verse 4. Y'all yeah, pay attention to verse 4. This is the big point. And Aharon and his sons. And, uh, and uh, Aharon and who? His sons. So it's not just Aaron who could go in here and write. It's also his sons. Do y'all know the importance of being called sons? Y'all remember the revelation that um, Rebirth been getting recently about how, man, we're really sons of Yahushua. We're really sons of the high priest. Is Aaron and his sons. Keep going. You shall bring to the door of the tabernacle of meeting, and you shall wash them with water. Okay, we'll just stop there. So what I want to point out is that this is about, when it comes to, when it's talking about the consecration of the priesthood, it's about the high priest and his son. It's about the high priest and his son. Now we're going to skip down to the verse we want to uh, look at. This is verse 38, okay? I like doing this. It's kind of what to do like this. <laughs> All right. Y'all ready? Verse 38. Now this is what you shall offer on the altar. Two lambs of the first year, day by day, continually. How often? Continually, day by day. Remember the uh, daily sacrifices is, also, is, is, is about the, uh, the daily prayers. Remember that? <coughs> is there anybody not familiar about how the daily sacrifices is about the daily prayers? Anybody not familiar with that? Because I learned not to assume, because I know this was, a, some, you know, it's been a couple years since we've been teaching on that. Okay. All right. Let's go. One lamb you shall offer in the morning. In the boker? In the boker. And the other lamb you shall offer at our rev. Hallelujah. With the one lamb, you sh with the one lamb shall be one-tenth of an ephah of flour mixed with one-fourth of a hand of pressed oil and one-fourth of a hand of wine as a drink offering. And the other lamb you shall offer at Arad, and you shall offer with it the grain offering and the drink offering as in the boker for a sweet aroma, an offering made by fire to Yahuwah. This shall be a continual burnt offering throughout your generations at the door of the tabernacles of meeting before Yahuwah, where I will meet you to speak with you. And there I will meet with the children of Israel, and the tabernacle shall be sanctified by my glory. So I will consecrate the tabernacle of meeting and the altar. I will also consecrate both Aharon and his sons to minister to me, to me as priests. Aharon and his sons. Keep going. I will dwell among the children of Israel and will be their Eloah. And they shall know that I am Yahuwah their Eloah who bring them up out of the land of Egypt that I may dwell among them. I am Yahuwah their Eloah. Ah, hallelujah. So, let's take a look at something real quick. Exodus 30, verse 7. Aharon shall burn on it sweet incense every boker. When he tends the lamps, he shall burn incense on it. So and we know that the incense is burned, is burned up every boker, right? 
And when else? Verse 8. And when a Haran lights the lamps at Arab, he shall burn incense on it, a perpetual incense before Yahuwah throughout your generations. So when all the incense is offered up to Yahuwah? Boker and Arab. So at the same time as the daily sacrifices, right? Yeah. And we know that the incense is, uh, is about prayer, the prayers of the people. Yeah. We know that's what that's about, right? Okay. All right, so why am I bringing all this up? So we know that this is about Aaron and his sons that do this. These are the only people that are allowed to go into the holy place to do the daily sacrifices, to do the daily incense. Aaron and his sons. But his sons are, it's like his sons are not the high priest, technically. His sons are his sons. So how does that work? Because the sons can go in to the holy place every day to offer up the incense and talk. That's the intimacy that Yahushua was looking for, was looking for from us. Was the daily sacrifice, the daily offerings, the daily prayers. And I submit to y'all that really because remember the womb, see this is a going into the holy place is going into the bride. Really, we are the bride. Remember, we are the temple of the Ruach HaKodesh. Our body is it. It doesn't say, see what I'm saying? So in a sense, in a sense, it's, it's like with the sons of Alua, the sons of the priests are being intimate with each other. That's the day, that's in a sense the daily sacrifices as well. It's about being. It's about loving your neighbor. What do we? What do we uh, repeat every Shabbat? Sure. We shall love you, who are your Lord, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And what does even over y'all always re uh, remind us of? You shall love, love your neighbor as yourself. I am Yahuwah. So the way to be intimate with Yahusha is through your intimacy with each other. It's through how you love one another. See what I'm saying? I submit that's another layer of the daily sacrifices as well. Because it's not... See, Aaron, he goes in and play, he comes in once a year to the Holy of Holies. Aaron's sons ain't allowed to go in the Holy of Holies. Only the high priest could do that. That's the Uncle Kippur. That's on a whole other level right there. But his sons, that's us, the sons of the high priest. That was a very recent revelation that the nation just got. That man, it's like, man, we are sons. The sons of the high priest go, can go in, are the only people who can go other than the high priest that can go into the holy place and they go in every single day. And it's like a, it, it, it symbol, I submit that this is symbolizing us loving one another. The love that we have for each other, the intimacy that we have for one another. What are we doing? What is, what is the sons of Aaron's priest? What, somebody tell me. Somebody tell me if they were paying attention to the reading. What do the sons of Yahushua or the sons of the high priest do when they go into the holy place to offer up the incense? What are some things that they do while they're in there? Go ahead. That's not what I was looking for. That's <laughs> not what I was looking for. So, on the daily sacrifices. Go ahead. Say it again. Give up a microphone or something, man. Man, Shannon off the chain. Hallelujah. So, yeah, that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what I was looking for. Say that just one more time. They tend the lamps. Hallelujah. Do y'all get what she's saying? So during the daily sacrifices, you have the priests on the outside at the altar of burnt offerings, offering up the lambs and the things you gotta offer up, the drink offering, the grain offerings. But then on top of that, you have the sons of Aaron going into the holy place. That's the secret place. 
That's going into the doorway to the womb. And there, they're not just going to offer up incense. No. They are offering up the incense too. But every day they're in there tending that lamp. Think about the work you got to do. You know, the lamp, according to Torah, that lamp could never go out. So what are they doing? They're pouring the oil in the lamp, making sure that the oil ain't running out. This is how we do to each other. This is how you love one another. I remember um, we got done with doing um, a, a deliverance one time, man. Uh, and that happens pretty much on every deliverance. Oil is getting poured on somebody. Oil is pouring out. And Ema just hit me out of the blue and was like, yeah, the most high. This Ema don't even go to his assembly. I ain't talked to her in I don't know how long. Oh, the most high is pleased with, uh, with you. What she say? Please with me and you? Something like that. Please with us. Um, because of the love you're showing for your <coughs> Mishpaka, so I'm going to, something like I'm going to, there's some things that came out. Um, even that we don't talk to, not in this assembly, texted me randomly after we done our deliverance to say that. Uh, and I knew it was the most time. But that's intimacy with each other. You pour in the oil, making sure the oil don't go out. Making sure, because the oil is what keeps the lamps burning. Because the fire in your altar can never go out either. The seven, is, the seven uh, candlesticks, the menorah, I mean the seven, the seven. Um, and it's interesting, it's interesting how Uriel and Bethel are yoked together in a way that you got menorah and Corbin. The menorah is getting tended to why Corbin is being offered every single day. The lamp, I submit, it also symbolizes the seven ruach coat of Yahuwah. That was actually in the, in the Torah reading today. It was in the, um, what they call that, the prophetic portion. You had the Torah portion and you had the prophet version. Half Torah, 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 Torah. It was in that in Isaiah. So, um, let's go ahead and go there real quick. Isaiah chapter eleven. That's how you love one another. Making sure the oil is in the lamp of each other. It's about. It's about pouring into each other. You see what I'm saying? It's about <coughs> holding each other accountable and making sure if you see one of them lights starting to flicker, you coming to them and you like, man, hold on. Or you like, and you making sure that fire keeps going. You see one of your people, that's that's the, you see one of your people straying away or veering off. Hey, hold on, Nicole, hold on, no, no, you know, no, you know, I can marry, you know, I know you say you're not going to do nothing, but we're not even going to play them games, though. That's actually love. Hey, I, you know what, you don't even need to be playing that video game. You know, it's all kind of pornographic type stuff in that video game. Nah, I, nah. That's love. That's helping to make sure that lamp don't start flickering out. That's what the sons of Aaron did every single day. See, when we think of intimacy, we just automatically, oh yeah, sex. Oh yeah, intimacy. Nah, it's way, on the, it's way deeper than that. That's just one aspect. That's the a way a husband and wife will have intimacy. But there's a way that you have intimacy in aha with your brother and sister too. There's a way that you have intimacy in aha with your children, right? It's different in, in every relationship. Come on. All right, all right, let's get on um, Isaiah chapter 11. <coughs> Yeshiyahu, or Isaiah chapter 11. Hold on. Before we go there, uh, give me Philippians 4, verse 18.
Philippians 4, verse 18. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epidotius the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to Eloah. So Paul was talking about a gift that was sent that was, he said it was an acceptable sacrifice to Yahuwah. It was a gift. It was, it was something that a brother was doing for another brother. So it's showing you that the things that we do for each other is a pleasing aroma to Yahuwah as well. That's part of the daily aspect of the daily sacrifices as well. How we are loving one another, how we are treating one another, the love that we have for our brother and sister. That's basically what Bethel was saying. That's basically what she was saying from full blown experience. I shouldn't even say that's what she was saying. That's basically what she experienced. Um, yeah, let's do 1 Peter 4 8 and then we'll go into Isaiah 11. 1 Peter 4 8. So it's about us being intimate with each other every single day. It's interesting that Chief, y'all remember what Chief was saying? When he was like, uh, Chief Moshe and Pesach, he was like, man, y'all don't, man, don't, don't question about how we, don't, don't try to question whether or not we love y'all or not. Because we done done too much. Yes. <coughs> I'm telling y'all, more than ever, the way that we love each other is another aspect of how to love Yahushua and how to be intimate with Yahushua. But that was talking about, she was asking where Yahushua was at and Yahushua was present through her Akio. Sometimes y'all might be asking where the Most High is at in a situation and he might be right in your face. Through your Akim or Al Cody. You have a need, you praying for a need, you got a need that needs to be met, you praying for it, you praying for it. And the whole time the Most High is trying to answer that prayer through your Ak or a code. Like I already answered your prayer, you just ain't reached out. Sometimes you just gotta reach out. Let's get it, y'all. First Peter chapter four, verse eight. And above all things, have fervent love for one another. For love will cut will love will cover a multitude of sins. Because it's a sacrifice, that's why. What's the only thing that covers sins? According to Torah. Blood. Blood. The sacrifice. So it's letting it showing you when it says, see, we I know in church we used to read this all the time. Love covered a multitude of sins. Love. Love. Love covered a multitude. You know, we just kind of just sounds good. No, what he's saying is that love is a sacrifice. That's what he's saying. Y'all already said it, like blood shed for that. Oh yeah. That's love. Yeah, my Isha, man, when she was out there, um, I woke up in the middle of the night and she still wasn't here. I was worried. I started calling around making sure everything was told because I think it was like raining that day or something. And, um, I know she had a lot going on and um, she answered the phone. She was like, yeah, no, everything's good. We still here. And she was just so in shalom and I was so, I can't, I can't, I can't even explain how uh, thankful I was for uh, Simka, for, uh, for Roland too. Because uh, I actually thought Annette was going to roll out there by herself. I mean, she loved her. So, I mean, Simka went out of her way. Yeah, know Simka be? <laughs> I can imagine. Oh, no, nah, I'm coming up there too. No, nah, no, nah, you had to turn around or something. I'm coming with you. <laughs> but, like Bethel was saying, man, it was just so amazing. Um, they were there 
until the middle of the night. That's called a sacrifice. Hallelujah. Everybody want to get married. Everybody want to get married. It's all fun and games until you actually get married, right? <laughs> it's real fun during the wedding, huh? Everybody dancing, you know what I'm saying? All praise to Yahuwah, praising Yahuwah. And then when all the lights turn off and it's just you and your Isha, stuff get real, real, don't it? Because love is a sacrifice. That's why it's such a big deal that Yahushua gave himself for us. That's the ultimate example of love, right? We all know that. We do that even in the church. Because love is a sacrifice. That's why it comes up onto the sins. Let's do Isaiah 11. Y'all ready? And then what we'll do after we do Isaiah 11, we're going to break, and then we're going to finish the rest of the lesson. That sounds good. We're going to break it the chairs up. All right. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 11. Y'all read this along for me, please. There shall come forth. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse. Who's Jesse? Father of Dawid. And a branch. David's dad. So we're talking about a specific family tree that is prophesied here in Isaiah 11. Someone who's come as a descendant of Jesse. It's interesting how Jesse's probably one of the most underrated dads in this. Yeah. I mean, he one of, man, he raised seven, he had seven boys, man. He, he was a good father. And I, I submit that's why Yahuwah calls him out. It doesn't stay a stem from David. Man. From Jesse. Jesse was, uh, I picture him being real humble and laid back and was just righteous. And so Yahuwah grouped him and had the, uh, the promised seed to come from him, including Yahushua, came from this stem as well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's keep going. So, there shall come forth a rod. So, a rod, a staff, y'all also know that's, a, uh, that's like tribe, family as well. But keep going. From the stem of Jesse. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. So what did Yahushua say? He said, I'm the vine and you are the branches. Could this be talking about the same branch? Was he talking to everybody when he said that? Or was he talking to the Yahudim, the children of David? He said, I'm the vine and you are the branches. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. This is a prophecy. This is a prophecy. <clears throat> Keep going. The Ruach, of, the Ruach of Yahuwah shall rest upon him. The Ruach of wisdom and understanding. The Ruach of counsel and might. The Ruach of knowledge and of the fear of Yahuwah. This is a prophesied spirit that would be coming up out of the stem of Jesse, out of a specific fam branch out of the family tree. Now, the branch is a part of a whole tree, right? Amen. But this is a branch coming from the children of Israel. The whole Israel is the whole tree. But this branch is a specific coming from a specific lineage from the children of David. And it's prophesied they're going to grow out, out of his roots. So it's, it's almost like, man, it's, it's, the branch shall grow out of his roots. So it's like this branch was cut down at one point in time. But it's like a resurrection is going to grow out of his roots. And this spirit is going to rest upon him. He's going to rest upon this branch. I submit this is the branch that we're talking about. That's us. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of Yahuwah. <clears throat> Keep going. Verse 3. His delight is, is in the fear of Yahuwah. And he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes. Read that slowly. Read that again. His delight is in the fear of Yahuwah. And he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth 
with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his loins and faithfulness the belt of his waist. This is the body of Yahushua. I submit the body. We know that this is talking about Yahushua as well. But this is another revelation that the nation, that the chiefs have gotten not too, very recently, is that a lot of the prophecies about Yahushua, you can insert the body of Yahushua in that too, and it still applies. You see what I'm saying? All right, let's go. Verse 6. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. So what does that mean? I always thought that this meant man. And it may mean that as well, but I'm going to introduce a different uh, uh, aspect. I always thought, oh, this is going to be so peaceful that wolves and lambs just going to be chilling together. <laughs> that's what I always thought. And that may be an aspect too. Don't get me wrong. It's not saying that that's not going to what this means. But just to get on different a different level, what did Yahushua say? He said, beware of false prophets and what they're going to come in. Ravenous wolves. And what kind of clothing? Sheep's clothing. Wow. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb during these days. I submit what this is actually saying. You know what? I'm going to wait. I'm, I think I might be going too far ahead of myself. Because it's going to tell you what it really is. I'm going to prove it by, by the way this is worded. So let's keep reading. The leopard shall lie down with the young goat. You see, it's giving you the same idea. A very, you know, carnivorous animal is chilling with a peaceful animal. That's the same idea. So keep reading, keep reading. The calf and the young lion and the fatling together. Right. And what shall lead them? And a little child shall lead them. Man, keep going. The cow and the bear shall graze. Man, keep going. Their young ones shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play by the cobra's hole. And the winged child shall put his hand in the viper's den. Now this is the point. This is the big point. Verse nine. This is what. This is what. What I submit. This is what this really means. Verse nine. They shall not hurt nor destroy. In all my holy mountain. All right. This is what I so. This is what I submitted. This another aspect of what this means is that the wolf will dwell with the lamb. And won't be able to touch him. It won't be able to. It won't be able to phase them. The child will put his hand in the cobra's hole or whatever the viper's den won't be able to phase the child. Y'all get what I'm saying? Yeah. The killer, the killer animals won't be able to do nothing to the peaceful. That's another aspect of what I believe this is saying. Yahushua was like, man, beware of the, of the false prophets because they come as ravenous wolves, you know, um, in sheep's clothing. And they will not spare the flock. But during these days, they won't be able to touch the flock. They may try to come in, they won't be able to do nothing. Hallelujah. They won't be able to phase us because we're so protected, we're so covered. Hallelujah. Isn't there another verse in the Brit Hadashah shower where Yahushua talks about, man, once the Ruach comes upon you, you'll be able to move. Snakes will bite you and won't phase you. Amen. This is, I submit, this is, this is the same, this is a similar, um, this is a similar sentiment, a similar message, basically. These ravenous beasts will not be able to phase you. That makes sense, y'all? Hey. All right, let's keep going. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of Yahuwah. So what do they say? Beware of false prophets, because they will come as wolves in sheep's clothing. They will come and she. So why do you? Who should say be word that? Because they will come with a teaching to try to deceive you. That's what false prophet. That's what the wolves will do. They'll come with a with a with a false teaching to try to turn you away from Yahuwah. How do you love your neighbor? Right by tending the oil, by putting the fire to keep those fire going. Because those seven spirits of Yahuwah 
That's I submit that's the menorah, the, the light of the lamp, the seven fires, flames. And so your, your neighbor, your brother, and your sister are going to love each other by keeping that fire going for those things of wisdom, understanding, fear of Yahuwah, counsel, and might, right? Amen. But a wolf is going to come to try to snatch that light from you by planting a seed using words, using doubt. They usually use fear because uh, anything that can get you away from faith, there's too much strength in faith. That's the shield of faith, the quest of fiery dark. So if they can plant a seed to veer you away from the faith, they got you. That shield is going away. Now you're exposed. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of times the enemy will come to try to plant a seed. To try, oh, did he really say that? Did the Most High really say that? Why do you think a house of time did that with the serpent? That goes back, gosh, that goes back to what Yahar was saying. House of time came as a serpent. That's a good point. I don't know where Yahar went, but yeah. So, um, okay. Oh, there she go. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's deep. Uh, that's really deep when she brought that up. It's very possible. Because we're going back to the ancient ways. So you might see ancient things happen. You might see Hasatan come as a serpent again like he did in the, in the guard. That's, that's a great point. Um, I'll pray to the Most High. I came identified and killed him on the spot, though, before anybody knew. Oh, yeah. Everybody was just like, oh, that happened? Oh, wow. After it's already done. Service. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Told out Yahushua. But the point is that um, a wolf in sheep's clothing is going to come to try to snatch that from you. They're going to try to take away the oil. They're going to try to take make that fire go out. And they do that by getting you away from what? The knowledge of Yahuwah. It's by teaching, it's by false teaching, it's by false doctrine. That's why it says, they shall not, those, those wicked animals shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of Yahuwah. Because what's the sword of the spirit? Word. Word. The earth will be full of the knowledge of Yahuwah. It will be full of the word. So they can't do nothing no more. They can't come and bite you. They can't come and veer you away no more. Can't nobody take that fire away from you no more. Uh, yeah. Because everybody is filled with the knowledge of Yahuwah during this time. If they said as the waters cover the sea, that's endless amounts of knowledge. It's going to be an outpouring of the knowledge of Yahuwah across all in his holy mount. That's his nation. That's what they mean. That's what he's talking about. No, ain't no snake gonna be able to come up in this up in this up in this place and bear somebody off. Oh, yeah. We've had that happen before. People try to come in and then plant a teaching and plant a doctrine to bear somebody away to 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 weaken their faith. We're almost done. In, uh, well, we're almost done with this portion, and then we're gonna break. All right. Uh, read verse nine one more time. <coughs> Verse 9, they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of Yahuwah as the waters cover the sea. So you see how that correlates with them not being able to hurt nor destroy in all of his nation? How the knowledge of Yahuwah correlates with that? Them not being able to hurt nor destroy in all his nation? What did Paul say? He said, I'm, 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 he said I'm, I'm grieved because he basically was saying when I leave the wolves are going to come not sparing the flock. He was grieved and it really happened after Paul died. Y'all know after Paul died that's when all the um, that's when Rome took over took over the faith. That's when like um, uh, the times, laws, and statutes changed. That's when Christmas came. That's when it was yeah, the council and I, oh, you can name it, what, what, what you call the church today. That all came, didn't that, when, when all the apostles were there, that, they couldn't do that. When Paul, when John, when all of them were there, none of the snakes could make it in because the Akim were at that time were doing their job. Paul was no joke. As soon as the snake even got close, he was killing it, like Moray did. See what I'm saying? But what happened as soon as they died, just look at the timeline. As soon as they died, that's when them doctrines started creeping in. 
There's going to be a time where you're not going to have to worry about none of that. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of your Lord. And I submit this is about us, the children of David. We're the ones who are spoke. That's why y'all, Yahuwah making a salt covenant with this nation is so big. It's up I don't think we'll ever grasp the fullness of this. We have a huge responsibility. We're talking about carrying on the prophecies that Most High established. We're talking about these things happening through us or our children or our children's children. <coughs> you see what I'm saying? All right, verse 10, let's go. Verse 10, and in that day there shall be a root of Jesse who shall stand as a banner to the people. For the Gentiles shall seek him and his resting place shall be glorious. It shall come to pass in that day that Yahuwah shall set his hand again the second time. The when? The second time. Oh, the second Pesach? Say it again. Yahuwah shall set his hand again the second time. This is about being born again, I submit. Because what is he going to do the second time? When was the first time? It was the first Pesach, the Egyptian release, right? Okay. He's talking about the second time. This has that well. I was going to say this hasn't happened yet, but actually this is what's happening right now. Hallelujah. Look what it says. The second time to recover who? The remnant of his people who are left. From where? From Assyria and Mithraim, from Pathros and Cush. You know those, I mean, from Cush, Elam. that's Africa. Egypt, that's Africa. Pathros, isn't that North Africa? i got to look that up again. Assyria, uh... That's right above Israel. Keep going. From where else? From Elam and Shinar. From Hamat and the islands of the sea. So I submit that's referring to the northern kingdom. Okay. That's referring to the northern kingdom of Israel. Keep going. He will set up a banner for the nations and will assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Yehuda. From where? From the four corners of the earth. From where? The four corners of the earth. So Yehuda is different. We're not just in one place. We're in the four corners of the earth. But this is the second exodus. This is the second Passover. This is being prophesied in the world. How the Most High will regather the northern kingdom. This is the two sticks coming together. He will regather Israel from those areas he mentioned because that's where they are at. I submit you go to those areas today, that's where they are at. And then he will regather Judah from the because we're not in those specific nations. We're in the four corners of the earth. Keep going. Also the envy, envy of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Yehuda shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Yehuda, and Yehuda shall not harass Ephraim. It's crazy that it says this, man. It's one of uh, it's just one uh, teacher that I know who's from the Northern Kingdom, he's uh, from West Africa, who was actually very closely connected with us for a while, with Rebirth, you know what I mean? And um, he went all the way left now. I mean, he had the full envy for Judah. Like, he makes this claim that the whole Torah and the scriptures was written by the Yahudim, it was written by Judah, and and that's why the Northern Kingdom is, 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 is uh, portrayed to be that way, it's portrayed to be so bad, all this type of stuff. And he literally just, I mean, he be going all the way in. I'm not even going to go into all the details. But um, he totally denies Yahushua now. He said that's a Yahudim work. I mean, it is. But his envy towards Yehuda um, causes him to be hostile towards the work because it seems like, I guess he feels like the, Yah the Yehudi scribes um, slanted to make themselves look better in the northern kingdom. But I'm just like, are you serious? If they was trying to do that, then they definitely wouldn't have wrote all the bad stuff about Judah that they wrote. Yeah. Like, if they was trying to do that, they could have left out a whole lot of stuff, huh? Yeah. I mean, man. So, it's just it's the most ridiculous thing you ever heard, but it's, it's Ruachal. It's Ruachal. It's about the envy that the North, the North has for Judah because of the role that Judah has in its awakening um, and, in, uh, and in prophecy. But that's going to go away. That's going to go away. Yeah. And Judah shall not harass Ephraim. 
Verse 14. But they shall fly down upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west. Toward where? The west. Man, that's where we at. Keep going. Together they shall plunder the people of the east. They shall lay their hand on Edom and Moab. They're going to be doing this together. Together. You're talking hundreds and millions of people. And the people of Ammon shall obey them. Yahuwah will utterly destroy the tongue of the sea of Misraim. With his mighty wind, he will shake his fist over the river and strike it into seven streams and make men cross over dry shot. Y'all hear this? This is another exodus. He basically said he's going to split the seas again. People going to be going over and make men cross over on dry land again. This is another exodus being prophesied about. This is another Pesach. This is a Pesach that we that we have in um that, that's not talked about a whole lot. Verse 16. There will be a highway for the remnant of his people who will be left from Assyria as it was for Israel in the day that he came up from the land of Egypt. So we know that um, in the original scrolls there were no chapter breaks, right? Okay. Uh, yeah. So I submit this next chapter. Uh, actually, let's continue on what this is saying. So let's go to Isaiah 12. And let's look at verse 1. What will happen in that day? This is why it's important to praise Yahuwah. Uh, yeah. This is Yahuwah. This is our role. This is our function is to praise and worship Yahuwah. This is what we are created for. That's why we must do that. It is not an option. Verse 12, I mean, chapter 12, verse 1. Verse 1. And in that day you will say, Oh, Yahuwah, Yahuwah, I will praise you. Though you were angry with me, your anger, your anger is turned away, and you comfort me. Behold, Elua is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For Yah, Yahuwah is my strength and soul. He also has become my salvation. I didn't realize they got Yah in this verse too. Interesting. Oh Yah. Verse 3. Therefore with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And in that day you will say, Praise Yahuwah. Call upon His name. Declare his deeds among the peoples. Make mention that his name is exalted. Sing to Yahuwah, for he has done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout. Do what? Cry out and yeah. shout. That's what y'all were doing just earlier, wouldn't y'all? Hallelujah. Oh, oh, inhabitant of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel in your midst. Hallelujah. 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 So let's do a five minute break, y'all. Let's get these chairs up here. Go ahead. How you doing? I just I just needed to confirm something because my mind is just absolutely blown right now about just a revelation that just came to me when Lori was um talking about the seven ruachs you know, of Yahuwah with the menorah. So when I, after I got menorah, I kept having dreams about somebody kidnapping her. I don't know, like I told people, even my daughter had a dream of her being like kidnapped. Wow, it's just, I just can't even believe it. But anyways, so I keep having this dream and I remember being so worried like I even met Shukri and I was like, I need to know what these dreams mean. Like, I, why, why am I keep dreaming of somebody kidnapping Menorah? Real close. Oh, God. Why am I keep, like, dreaming of someone kidnapping Menorah, right? So, I just, so it just occurred to me. So, in the, the, the second dream that I had of someone kidnapping her, Shushana was in my dream. And when the person took her into the other building, we went to go look for her, but they already kidnapped her. She went before me to um, kind of, you know, look to see what was going on, to see how we were gonna sneak and get her back. 
But it just occurred because at that time I was going through a lot and I, I wasn't really pressing into Yahuwah as much. The kidnapping of menorah was in menorah. It was my fire. Like the, all the spirit, everything that I had was was getting kid. Like it was kid, getting kidnapped from me. And of us pouring into each other, she does. Like what is saying? Like your your brother and your sister, you know, pouring the oil into your lamp. She was she went to help me find my fire. Mm. You know what I mean? And in real life, at that time, Shishana was really pouring out. You know, pouring into me. You know, and just really being a mentor for me. I sorry, but this revelation is just amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, because I still think about that moment and that time and those dreams and it's like I never got a revelation until now, you know. You know, we really had to pour into each other. Like she was literally helping me find the fire in the dream. Like Wow. It's just it's just it's just beyond amazing, you know, and then when my daughter had the dream, the 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 people that stole Menorah was a freezing company. Like the opposite of fire, like coal, like a freezing company. So I just wanted to bring out, because I just absolutely mind blown, and I just wanted to confirm what you say, Maury, about us feeding each other fire. Like, I just, I just. Yeah, this was the first day of a living bread when I came up. And um, on Pesach, for all them, those who were at Pesach tonight, I was just chilling, was having a good time, and then uh, I was with my family, I was with Isha and Med, and the chief was just like, What more are you saying, man? Whoa, whoa. Like, Come on, up here. Come on, I know you got this. I know. Like, no. No, I didn't, I didn't prepare for this. <laughs> like, man, you got this, man. I know you got this. Like, oh, okay. So, uh, so, uh, so I, um, he wanted me to bring out the revelation about the birth. Because when I did that teaching, he told me that the Most High was showing him the same thing around the same time about Pesach is a birth. And so he just wanted me to bring it out to everybody. I was like, man, you could have told me. I could have, you know, I had to prepare, you know. But okay, so I did my best for memory. But there was a whole lot I forgot until I was going off of memory. And, uh, you know, uh, even my here was just like, oh, that was so told. That was so bad. And I was great. But, man, you just shit, man. It, it, it felt like you was finna go even more and you stopped. You know, you should have kept going. I like I know I, my mind went blank. Like I, cause what I wanted to talk about was the conception. I wanted to talk about the the what I, uh, about how the high priest goes into the holy of holies and how that's the conception and how that leads to the pace I the birth. I wanted to get into all that, and I literally went blank. The next day is when the Most High showed me that extra layer about the daily sacrifice and the intimacy and things like that. And I really believe that was the most high. I was why, because it was more to it that I needed to understand first before even bringing it out on that level. So, uh, all praise to Yahuwah Lua. Um, told out for the revelation, told out for the confirmation. Yahuwah is amazing. Yahuwah is amazing. And the way that we're going to be. And then, you know, the stuff that Mishpachah is going through right now, the stuff that they'll share. It was like the most high I wanted to make sure we understood this stuff right at the right time. Because he knew it was coming. So I submit to y'all to understand the importance more than ever of making sure that we are loving each other. We're going into the holy place. It's not just the high priest that goes into the holy place, but the sons of the high priest do too. Which is y'all to tend the fire, to tend the lamps, to make sure the fire is going. Look after your, your brother, your sister. Be there for them. Pour into each other. Pour into each other. 
pour into each other even remember love is a sacrifice so you might i know um especially the intercessors probably know you can pour into each other so much that you're poor that you you emptied yourself out for somebody else that's love it might take you a couple of days to recoup because you have emptied yourself out for somebody else that's real love it's a sacrifice yeah. all right y'all let's break uh oh go ahead <laughs> No, no, go ahead. No, hold on. No, we're going to listen. All right. Good. I just wanted to, because um, I feel like Yahoo is really um, dealing with us in regards to love, loving each other, him loving us. Um, so, I had a miscarriage on the 4th. On the 3rd that night, I was sleeping. This was the the... The shlishi that we were still in um, Bells before we, or it was the Denison, before we came down from Pesach, I had a dream and I told Uriel my dream. I had a dream that I was praising and worshiping and I was standing and then I just like stood against the wall and then I just kind of fell down and felt like I was having a seizure. Maury came to me and started pressing on my lower stomach. When he started pressing on my lower stomach, I started to bleed from my private area. And then later on that day, I actually started bleeding and that was, the, that was me going into having a miscarriage and I didn't understand the dream at that time. And when I was speaking to Mo, uh, Chief, Chief Moshe, because him and Mo, uh, Amakai you know, called me while I was in the hospital to pray with me, and I told him that dream, she was, she was completely mind blown about the fact that Yahuwah literally showed me what was going to happen to me before it happened to prepare me because he loved me. Wow. So that it didn't just punch me, you know, like hit me to where it was like, okay, I, I, at least I have something to take fake back on to know like, okay, he was trying to prepare me and he didn't just rip the carpet from under me. And that's the love that he has for us and that's the love that he wants us to have for each other. So. Oh, uh, we have uh, uh, Sophia. Sure. Oh, you just let me know, okay? I was just saying that um, yeah. that what you just shared may have been what gave you the strength to show up here today. Is he, he almost like cushioned the fall? You know what I mean? So, uh, I'll pray to the side. That's amazing. Hallelujah. So, all right, y'all, let's go ahead and get these chairs up. Um, we're going to reconvene in about seven minutes, y'all. Seven minutes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.